Chapter 23, Thunder Cave. I heard the clatter of pots and pans and opened my eyes. It was still dark out, but the men were already moving around camp. The fire had been stoked and the cook was busy making breakfast. Before long, Donovan came out of his tent. I was very nervous about meeting my father. They'd probably been intercepting his mail for months, and there was a good chance that he didn't know about my mother's death. What was I going to say to him? How was I going to break the news about Mom? I was also nervous about Pete. By now, he must have come out of his trance and discovered I was gone. What would this do to the ceremony? From where I was sitting, the sky looked clear. Donovan walked over. Good morning. I looked up at him. My father doesn't know about my mother, does he? No, I don't believe he does. He's been pretty isolated. The Institute has tried to reach him on the radio, I said. But they stopped trying. We jammed all of his incoming signals. Why? He knows where the elephants are. We've tried to follow him to the elephants, but he's managed to elude us. Your father knows what we want, but he won't give in. He is only one native working with him, and I don't think even he knows where the elephants are. Why didn't you kidnap him and make him tell you? Donovan laughed. Come on, Jacob. You know your father better than I do. You think that he'd tell us? No, I didn't. What makes you think he'd tell you now? He'll tell us to protect you. He cares more about you than he does about the elephants. We read the letters he sent you before sending them on. That is, most of them. Some just had too much information, and we were unable to forward them. They controlled everything. Why these elephants, I asked. There are other elephants not like these, he squatted in front of me. The tusks on these elephants are worth more than you can imagine. We have a client who is going to pay a great deal for them because he knows that they are the last of the biggest. Donovan stood up and looked out at the lightning sky, then turned the lightning sky, then turned back to me. This isn't your fault, he said. Your father would have eventually made a mistake or the elephants would have made a mistake. In fact, we have a pretty good idea where the elephants are. So you see, it was only a matter of time. Donovan didn't know where they were. That's why he needed my father. If my father knew they were trying to follow him to the elephants, why didn't he leave the area? And if they found the elephants on their own, what could he do to stop them before kill- from killing them? Your dad's pretty stubborn. That answered both questions about my father. And I knew Donovan was right to save me. My father would lead them to the elephants. It was working out perfectly for them. It'll be dawn soon, he said. Your father left his camp a couple of hours ago. He should be here right on time. He walked away. The waiter set the table again. This time he put out three plate settings. The man monitoring the radio took the headset off and walked over to Donovan's tent. Donovan appeared in the doorway and they spoke for a moment. Then the man returned to the radio, and Donovan walked over to me. Your father will be here in a moment, he said. Untie him. I stood up and rubbed my arms. Please sit at the table, Jacob. I saw no point in resisting. One of the guards would just force the issue. I pulled out a chair and sat. Donovan sat down in the chair next to me. Pretty soon, I saw headlights appear in the distance. Two men with rifles ran to the edge of camp. My father's Land Rover slowed down and stopped. It was too dark to see clearly, but when he got out, it looked like they frisked him. When they were finished, they led him over to the tent. Dad! I stood up. Donovan reached out and grabbed my arm. That's far enough. Get your hands off him, my father shouted. And he started to move forward, but was pulled back by the two guards. Everybody just settle down, Donovan said. Everybody just settle down, Donovan said, still holding my arm. Are you all right, Jake? I'm fine. Sit down, Jacob, Donovan said. I remained standing. I said sit down. He tried to pull me down, but I resisted. Go ahead, son, my father said. Do what he says. Reluctantly, I sat down. 
That's better, Donovan said. Much better. There's no use in making this more difficult than it has to be. I hadn't seen my father in over two years. His hair was very long and pulled back into a ponytail, and he had lost weight. He looked worried and very tense. I don't know how you got a hold of Jake, but... Donovan interrupted him. Dr. Lanza, I'll do the talking. Please sit down. My father hesitated, then pulled out a chair and sat. The two men stared at each other. Neither spoke while the cook put food on our plates. Eat, Donovan finally said. My father looked down at the plate, then at me. I kept my hands in my lap. Are we going to go through this again? Donovan asked. Your son doesn't seem to like my food either. For the first time since he arrived, my father smiled. It had been a long time since I had seen that smile, and it made me feel very good. Go ahead and eat, Jake, he said. It doesn't matter. He slowly picked up his knife and fork and began to slice the meat on the plate. I kept, I still kept my hands in my lap. He hadn't told me to eat my food since I was a kid. He forked a piece of meat into his mouth and chewed it slowly and swallowed. He turned to me again. Jake, eat. It's all right. I picked up my silverware and started to eat. Good, Donovan said. I knew we'd be able to work through these problems. My father looked at him. What do you want? Donovan took a bite of food. You know what I want, Dr. Lanza. My father continued to eat. His expression gave nothing away. I want those elephants, Donovan continued. And you know where they are. If you show us, we'll give you Jacob, a simple exchange for something that you know we'll eventually get anyway. I don't know where they are, my father said. Dr. Lanza, let's not play games. Even we know they're near this area. Then send your men out and kill them, and Jacob and I will be on our way. As you know, it's not that simple. My trackers say the elephants disappear. I don't believe them, of course. The elephants have to go somewhere, and I believe that you know where this is. I don't, my father said. And a radio collar on, I have a radio collar on one of them, but I haven't heard the signal in over a week. From time to time, they do disappear. I have no idea where they go. But you do believe they go somewhere? Yes, but I don't know where it is. They're not like other elephants. There's very little logic to their behavior. It looked like he was telling the truth. He really didn't know where they were. Donovan thought about this for a few moments. But you've been able to get close enough to put a collar on one? I got lucky. We ran into them in the bush. And I got a dart into one of them before the herd ran away. They're very weary of people. I've only seen them a couple of times myself. They're almost unapproachable. I suppose that's why they've lived as long as they have. Well, I hope you're lucky again, Dr. Lanza. Donovan said, staring at him, because your son's life depends on it. My father met his gaze. There's no guarantee that we'll find them. Donovan looked at me. That would be a shame. My father sighed with resignation. How do you want to do this? We can use my airplane, Donovan said. Attach your radio antenna to the wing. We'll cover a lot of territory in a very short time. Yeah, my father said distractedly. He knew that Donovan hadn't beat, and I knew it was my fault. I felt awful. My father got a distinct look on his face as if he was thinking about something, then turned to Donovan and said quietly, I realize that I'm in no position to bargain, but let me run something by you. Go ahead, Donovan said cautiously. You've killed most of the elephants around here. Certainly all the big tuskers, Donovan interrupted, not all of them. Please let me finish, my father said. By all means. Donovan seemed amused. But before you continue, let me tell you something. Perhaps it will make you feel better. As you know, large tusks are rare, and there are collectors who will pay a great deal for the tusks. The ivory from your elephants will not, will not be cut up into small pieces. The collectors want them kept whole. That doesn't make me feel any better, my father said. This herd represents a genetic line that cannot, that can't be replaced. Do you know what that means? No, but I'm sure that you'll tell me, Donovan said sarcastically. What you're doing is killing the goose that laid the golden egg. My father continued. 
You've killed all the big tuskers. The only elephants left are the ones that were passed over because their ivory wasn't worth taking. If you kill... If you kill all the elephants with big tusks, then there will be no more big ivory. Big ivory is inherited, passed from one generation to another. Are you suggesting that we let these elephants go? Donovan asked. No, my father said. I realize that you're holding all the cards and you won't do that. I'm glad you see it my way. What I'm suggesting is that you let me tranquilize the elephants. When they're down, I'll cut the tusks off. There'll be some damage and a great deal of pain for the elephants, but this way they might survive. Innovative, Dr. Lanza, very innovative. Donovan looked across the savanna and tapped his fingers together as he thought about this. After several seconds, he looked back at my father and said, And if I do this, what will I get out of it? Aside from doing something decent? Yes, aside from that. It was my father's turn to think. He stood up walked a few steps from the table, then turned around. I'll cooperate, he said. But I already have your cooperation, he said. I have your son. I mean, I'll really cooperate, my father said, regaining some of his passion. I'll try to locate the elephants as quickly as possible. I'll use every trick I know to get close enough to them. And you have my word that we won't try to escape. You know these elephants are nervous. I promise you I, that... I won't try to spook them. He came back to the table and sat down. I haven't been exactly straight with you, he said. That doesn't surprise me, Dr. Lanza. I've been around the herd a lot, he said. Three of them are collared, not one. I've been close enough to take individual photos of them, all, of all of them. So it hasn't been luck. No, he said. They sometimes tolerate my being around. It's as if they know I don't mean them any harm. And there are other times... My father shook his head. Well, they're just spooky, and I can't get within miles of them. Their signals go off in the air. I have no idea where they go. Then, one day, I pick up the signal again. Are you able to get close again? Sometimes, sometimes not, my father said. But I'll tell you one thing. If you start blasting them with your rifles, you'll get one, maybe two. But you won't get the whole herd. They'll disappear into the bush, and you'll never see them again. Donovan looked at my father and smiled. You know, Dr. Lanza, you think on your feet. I admire that. And I think that you've given me genetics lesson as well. What's that? Donovan pointed at me. Your son, of course, he said. He's very much like you. He frightened a herd of elephants away from us, and he made a very daring escape despite being guarded by two men. You are very much alike. I guess you'd say it's in the genes. My father looked at me. You scared elephants away from them? I nodded. He grinned, then looked at Donovan. Well, we will try it your way because it amuses me, Donovan said. But don't forget that I do hold all of the cards and that both of you and your son will die. My father looked at him. What guarantee do I have that you'll let us go when this is over? Donovan said, when we get the ivory from these elephants, our work is finished in this part of Africa. There's nothing more worth taking. As we speak, the ivory is being loaded and will be taken to a depository where it will be shipped out of the country. By the time you and Jacob can report this, it will be as if we were never here. Except for the bones that you've left behind, I said. Donovan looked at me and smiled pleasantly, then looked back at my father. You see, Dr. Lanza? It is genetic. He stood up and called Moha. Moha walked to the tent. Dr. Lanza is now in charge of this operation, Donovan said. I want you to do everything he asks. Moha acknowledged the order with a slight nod, but he didn't look too happy about it. 